Hi, I want to talk to you about Windows 8 and why it worries me. Before we get to the demo, the most important thing that I want you to remember out of this video is that Windows 8 is not Windows. But don't get me wrong, I know it's got plenty of Windows code under the hood and Microsoft is welcome to name its products whatever it wants to, but the user interface in Windows 8 is so different and you use it in such different ways that it's much better to think of it as a completely new operating system that's replacing the old Windows. Now that has some really important implications for the rollout of Windows 8. Over the years, as companies have done new versions of operating systems, they've established some best practices about how do you roll those things out without upsetting your current customers. Microsoft has chosen not to follow all of those best practices. And as a result, I think there's going to be some real risk in the Windows 8 transition. Now, if you work at Microsoft, I think you should be worrying about these problems and trying to mitigate them. If you compete with Microsoft, you should probably view these problems as an opportunity. If you're an app developer uh, creating new applications for any platform, you should be thinking about how Windows 8 may change the competitive environment. In any case, you would be a fool to ignore the changes that are going to be made by Windows 8 this fall. Let me give you a demo of what those changes will be. Windows 8 starts up pretty quickly. When you first start the process, you're greeted by a little fish, and then you get this screen, a, a picture of some coral, um, a very big time and the date, and of course the all-important battery status and, and network status. Now the first thing that I notice when I look at this is, frankly, how nice looking it is. I mean, uh, Microsoft's always shipped pretty pictures along with Windows, uh, but the balance here of the typography on the lower left and the image on the upper right, kind of the way the whole thing hangs together, it shows a level of visual literacy that Microsoft just hasn't displayed previously in Windows. And, and this kind of goes throughout Windows 8. It, it, to me, it's one of the most impressive things about the whole product. The second thing uh, that I noticed is um, I'm not <laughs> completely sure what to do when I see the screen. I mean, there is the nice typography there, and there's the nice picture, and you, know, you kind of say to yourself, maybe if I hover over these things, something will happen, but nothing does, or maybe if I click on them. Now, that that was interesting. Something kind of bounced up and down. It looks like there's a, uh, looks to me like there's a toolbar down here that if I click right, maybe I could do something with, but when I start to try to double click, it, it just bounces up and down. So it actually was, was very, very confusing. And you notice the cursor doesn't change to, to give me any hint of what I'm supposed to be doing. It just stays this arrow all the time. And finally, reading online, what I discovered is there's a little trick to this, is that uh, we're emulating the use of a touch screen here. And so what you're supposed to do is click and drag. Click and hold it, and you drag up, and here's the, the login screen. Um, so that was a nice little visual piece of, of eye candy. Um, the, the thing that I kind of wondered to myself is, why didn't we just start with this screen, since that's where I'm supposed to actually go to. I, I don't know why it had to be hidden. But anyway, for whatever reason, now you're at the, the place where you can log in. Um, and so, you know, just type in your password. There you go. Oh, and that was really cool. I mean, I love the way that, that my name shifted over to the right and these things popped up. It was it was really visually very, very appealing. I thought that was neat. So now that uh, we've launched Windows, I can switch to the screen recorder so I can show you a, a better view of the, the screen. So this is uh, what Microsoft calls the, the Metro view. It's the Metro design language. And uh, it's got some really interesting characteristics. It's It's modeled after... Uh, the sorts of graphics that are used in public transportation. So think of the signs that you see on a subway system or something like that. So pretty bold colors, um, very simplified images, uh, clear typography, um, and also things are designed to be kind of in a, in a sort of a continuous pane rather than a bunch of different overlapping windows. And so this thing actually scrolls over to the right to display additional applications. There's a scroll thing here I can, I can click on to do this. The rectangles that you see here, uh, are called tiles, uh, and you use these instead of icons in order to launch application. So, for example, we can, uh, we can go over here, um, and here are a couple of applications that I downloaded uh, off the application store, and we can bring up this one, which is a little sketching application. It lets you do some simple drawing, and so, you know, here's a drawing I was working on before. It's pretty ugly, so maybe we can make a new one here. And, you know, you can do all the sorts of things you would expect to be able to do is draw a line, and you can draw shapes and other things like that. And, you know, do, do all the usual stuff that you'd expect to. Now, um, it gets kind of interesting um, if you want to save. 
Um, so that's this disk icon down here. And what that'll do is it brings up this. And this is where if you're, you're used to using Windows, you start to notice something that's kind of jarring, which is a lot of the controls that I use for file management are not there. I can sort these things by name or by date, um, but I don't have the options to sort by other attributes uh, like file type or to be able to vary the size of the little preview that I'm seeing for the different documents and stuff like that. So Microsoft has been working to simplify to make this more approachable, to make it also something that's easier to deal with in a touchscreen situation. Um, but in the process, they've lost a lot of the functionality uh, that you would expect to get if you're a Windows user. And uh, that is a repeating theme that you'll see over and over again. I start to wonder about things like, well, what if I was trying to do a more complex application in Metro? Like, how would I do Photoshop uh, with this interface? Or I'm going to be really interested to see how are the, the Office documents going to work with this interface. And it's not clear to me that they're necessarily going to succeed all that well. Now, one of the other things that's a little confusing here is because I don't have menus, I don't actually know how to quit out of this application. Um, and by experimenting around, what I found was if I went down here, I would get a little view of the start thing. And then if I click on it, oh, well, that's cool. Okay, so I'm back to start. And so my assumption at this point is, great, I've, I've just quit out of that application. But actually, the app is still running. You haven't quit at all. And the way you can find that out is you go up to the upper left-hand corner. And then you see it shows you a little window to show you that the app is still active. And I can, I can click on it. Yeah, and I get back to that application. The way you quit, not too intuitive, um, you go up here and you, you click and drag down from the top. And this time you see that the cursor does turn into a hand to show you that you're dragging something. You have to drag it down here to where it disappears, and then that quits out of the application. Now, if you want to work in existing Windows applications, you're not just trapped in Metro. You can go over to this thing here called Windows Explorer, which is not to be uh, confused with Microsoft Internet Explorer over here. Windows Explorer is the old Windows file system, so you can click on that, and here we are. Let's get that window out of the way. And there's there's the fish again. Now this looks like Windows, uh, with, with one exception, that the Start menu is missing. Um, and uh, the, the Start menu in Windows is a really, really important function. And in fact, I should show you what that looks like in Windows 7, in case you're not a Windows user. I know a lot of the people who read my blog are Mac users. So let's show you what the Start menu looks like uh, in Windows. And, you know, it's this, and you, you click on it here. Uh, so we're now showing you Windows 7. And what you've got here is a huge number of uh, different functions that are available to you. You can click to launch different applications. Um, and if you, you don't see all the applications you're after, you can click this All Programs thing, and it shows all of them. Um, you can also open individual documents, recently opened documents. So you go up here, you know, on top of PowerPoint, and there's my list of things that I've done recently in PowerPoint. Um, you have also got the option here to launch all of your control panels. You've got a bunch of different directories that you use often. This is where you get help. This is where you type in order to search. And this is also where you shut down the computer or put it to sleep. And you know, part of the, the old joke that people used to make about Windows was only Microsoft would have you click the Start button in order to shut down the computer. And it was a little inconsistent, but the advantage is um, you know where everything is. And if you've used Windows for a while, you understand where to find all these functions. And they're all in one place, so it's quite convenient. Now let's switch back to, to Windows 8 now. And let's show you where those those functions have been distributed in different places. And this is where it starts to get tricky for an existing Windows user. Um, so, for instance, if start is a matter of going back to uh, the, the start thing here. This is how you start all your applications. You scroll over to the right. You can see here's all the Windows apps, traditional Windows apps that I've installed. If you want to do uh, control panels, then it's a little tricky as to, well, you know, where, where are the control panels? How am I going to get to that? And it turns out the way you do that is you come down to the lower right and you get something called the charms bar here. And so you've got search. So there's where search is. Um, and share, which is a little different. Start, which gets you back to starting things. Devices, which really confused me for a while because this looks like the power icon. So for a while I thought this was how you shut things down. And then settings. And settings turns out to have some, but not all, of the control panel functions. This is settings. 
and then I can say more PC settings here and then it brings up something that visually is really beautiful you know and this is this is much better than the control panel arrangement in Windows this is this is really nice um, and so I was pleased with this but what starts to get confusing is not all of the traditional control panels are represented here um, and in fact some things that I'm, I'm used to being able to do like controlling the power settings on my notebook I can't do here so that gets to be a problem it's also not totally clear to me how I get out of this um, and the only way I've been able to find to do it is just go back to this and then I want to get back to Windows Explorer so I do this um, so if I want to get to the other control panels that I want to reach it turns out there are some ways to get to those the most straightforward is to do this to open up the the file explorer and then if you go to I believe it's up from the computer level yeah you can then get back to the control panel system folder and then you can launch all of the traditional uh, Windows control panels here now the other thing that that really confused me a lot was trying to figure out um, how do I turn the computer off uh, because after all there there's no start button and therefore I don't know where the shutdown command would be so you could you could go up to your little login thing up here and when you try to use that you click on it but it doesn't actually give you a, a power off thing all it lets you do is sign out in which case we'd be back to that startup screen so I don't want to do that what it turns out to be and I had to look this up online is you have to go get the the charms bar again um, and bring that up and then you choose settings and within settings one of the icons is power you choose power and then you choose the option for for shutdown um, so we've gone from uh, shutdown being under the start menu which was thought to be unintuitive to now where shutdown is under the the settings menu which is if anything even less intuitive than it was before so if you add up all of these changes they're not a complete disaster for an existing Windows user. I'm sure you can eventually figure out how to use it, but it's not intuitively obvious. You end up having a really, really frustrating situation up front unless somebody has shown you how to use it. Um, and it's all very, very disorienting. You know, instead of noticing the great new things you can do with Windows 8, what you immediately start noticing is what you've lost. That Plus the awkwardness of entering these touch gestures when you're using a trackpad or a mouse makes you feel almost trapped. You know, to to me, these these plain, simple graphics, which which look so great at, at at the start, start to look you know almost sinister. You know, it's like that 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 fish is staring at me and it's mocking me when I'm trying to get things done. And rather than feeling like you're on the verge of accomplishing something wonderful, you start focusing on the fact that you can't work the way that you wanted to in the past. And this is, I think, going to be a big challenge for Windows 8 because if the existing Windows users don't feel happy and empowered by this thing, they're not going to adopt it in droves. And if they don't adopt it in droves, you're not going to be able to jumpstart the beginning of this platform. Instead, it's going to sell really slowly and you're going to get all the commentators saying, well, I guess Microsoft failed in the face of the competition from the other guys. And that's exactly what Microsoft needs not to have happen. So I have some thoughts on the implications of all of this, what to do about it, and how to give this thing a better chance of being successful. And I cover all of those things in my, my weblog post on the topic, which you can find at, uh, at this address. Thanks for joining me.